we decided to reach out to Los Ciegos del Barrio to see if we could dive into a day in the life of their old blind salsa band, whose name translates into the blind guys from the hood. We followed Alvin Suarez, the band leader and drummer, from his house to the studio, where they practice and record their original songs. He's a real nowhere man. Hey, what's up? How you doing, man? How's it going? Alvin, man. What's up? Hey, Alvin. Hey, what's up, Alvin? Lucha. Yeah. Nice, How you doing, nice man? Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Same, man. Um, so, welcome to my tiny ass apartment. <laughs> um, uh, I'm almost ready. If you guys want to come in. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a lot of my timbal stuff that I use for timbal. Now they have some stuff there already, so I don't need everything, luckily. So I'm just gonna grab the stuff out of this bag. So I'm gonna kind of pop that in here. And this is like the jam block for salsa and stuff. Like yeah, yeah. So I will put that. Everybody's contacting me right now. Uh, they're probably like, Are you ready, man? Right here. And so, how do you get all the stuff down? Do you have someone come up and help you? Or? Nah, I'm gonna bring it down. I gotta oh. carry it. The screen is blacked out and voice over. So it reads everything to you? Yeah. Um, right now, I got the speech kind of fast. Yeah. Um, wow. Pick up current location. And you, you double the way you tap on it is how is how you get it to work. Yeah. That's all, that's all current. Mm. All right. Ready. Let's go. Alvin? Okay. Alright, looks like we'll make it. I got some messages waiting for me, so I gotta listen to them. Um, from the band. Put the headphones on real quick. Yeah. Um, so I can listen, to listen to your discreetly. Messages. Yeah. Mm. I may have some really hot FBI information that's classified. <laughs> I don't want anybody to hear. <laughs> uh, so, this shouldn't be too long. It's usually about a 20 minute ride. No it's a Sunday, it's quiet. We hope. Hey, what's up? Alright, so uh, I'm writing down with um, the uh, students um, that are filming me. Um, um, so Andre called, he wants uh, us to do his songs first, if it's okay, because he has to get up really early in the morning. Um, so, you know, that's a pretty reasonable request. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. What's my current location? You're on FTR Drive, New York, New York. Okay, yeah, we're, uh, looks like we're in some traffic. Yes, how long do you think we'll be at the studio? It's probably, um... Oh, hang on. Sorry, I got another <laughs> fantasy sports other. <laughs> Touchdown or what? Yeah. Okay, Tom Brady. Um, yeah. Uh, it'll probably be about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of some traffic and some rain, but it won't be too bad. No problem, period. I should be there in about 10 minutes, period. Okay, so anyway, I play a sport called uh, goal ball. Mm. It's basically a combination of bowling, um, I guess, hockey, and volleyball. Um, there's three guys to each side. It's the most popular competitive sport for the blind and visually impaired. Okay. There's like three of us on one team. No, four of us on one team, and I guess three or four of us on the three of us on another. Yeah. That makes and sense. then one of us goes as a pool player. So. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's, I'm excited. That's another one of those things I do. <laughs> Um, you still got it or you want me to grab it? I got it. Yeah, right here. The other cameraman, I think, missed me. Okay, um... Okay, 
okay, comma, just take the elevator to the fourth floor, comma, walk down to the third floor, comma, we are in Studio A, period. Yeah, I got through. We might do the songs with no drums uh, first. Okay. Uh, right here is yeah. the edge of the oh, stage. Gotcha. Yeah, like a stage. Yeah. And okay. if you come up here, yeah. the drum kit is right over here. Yeah. Right, cool. Mm -hmm. Alright, there we go. Wow. And then right here if you just shuffle it a bit. Here you go, kids. Thanks, man. No problem. Just see Rosa. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's my my mic. Yeah, that's my vocal mic. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here. There's a sustain pedal and a foot switch. So the foot switch is for the upper keyboard, and sustain pedal is for the lower keyboard. Cool. So you'll, you'll be covered for strings and horns. Yeah. Yeah. You went to Cindy B? Huh? You went to Cindy B in a very tough game because I know. whoever wins, well, whoever loses is not making the playoffs, I know. but whoever wins may not make the playoffs. I know, and, and then it's top roll up. It's a very close matchup, and we both have players that are underachieving. <laughs> I actually have no idea who's going to win the game. I was down by two points. You see, because he was telling me about his, how he how oh. his fantasy football. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did that with him as well. So as I said earlier, I'm going to be doing um, a video with the rest of the band. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get some wedding gigs, casino gigs, and stuff like that. That's why I'm kind of dressed up a little bit. Yes. Um, and um, we're going to do different genres of music, not just Latin. Because a lot of the times we'll get gig leads for stuff like classic rock, for example, 90s rock, stuff like that. Okay. Motown, other English yeah, stuff. Yeah, that'll be fun. And then it's like, I don't have video proof that we do it, but I know we can. So today we're going to put together that video proof. Uh, and since it's upper paying gigs, I gotta kind of dress up, dress up a little. So, you've been playing in New York for a while now. Yeah. We're wondering what some of the difficulties are and what you find challenging about playing. Um, basically a combination of the cost of living and uh, what a lot of venues, restaurants, clubs, uh, and people are willing to pay nowadays for live music, for live musicians. Uh, it's tough, um, especially now with uh, you know, the age of karaoke. And um, <clears throat> she spoke about how DJs are kind of changing the music scene. Um, how do you think you've been able to adapt to the way that music's been changing and the way that um, DJs are more incorporated? Well, um, in, in a lot of ways, we kind of have to keep up with <laughs> whatever the DJ is playing. Uh, what we do is we have, uh, we have ways of being able to fuse mus uh, different types of music together. Uh, so we're primarily, primarily we're primarily a Latin band, uh, but we're able to uh, play all sorts of other styles of uh, rock, you know, you know, a little reggae, a little jazz. Uh, and so we're able to just fuse all of that stuff together. And uh, we're even able to uh, play many Latin rhythms and styles with, uh, you know, with English lyrics and everything. And that's how we're able to adjust. So did you have to learn the new styles like reggae from, from scratch or um, did you try and mirror other artists that you used to listen to maybe? Um, that's, yeah, I, um, everything that I've learned, uh, I've learned by ear. Um, and uh, yeah, the best way for me to learn um, was to just try to imitate and emulate um, all the different styles that I was hearing. So primarily you played Latin music. Um, yes. Did you have any specific artists that you wanted to try and um, to to be more like, or maybe uh, artists who you listened to growing up that you tried to emulate? Um, I have lots of uh, influences. In fact, there are too many to name, but uh, just the name of like a handful. Because uh, uh, my favorite uh, genre personally is salsa music, 
uh, Frankie Ruiz, uh, Hector Lavo, um, uh, even Mark Anthony, um, other artists like Juan Luis Guerra, um, those are people that, uh, uh, yeah, Wilfrido Vargas is another one, uh, those are mm -hmm. people that have uh, in, uh, influenced me very heavily. And uh, I, I never really try to be like anyone, uh, any one of them because I can't, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you just kind of have to make uh, music your own. Uh, you know, so you just kind of sing, let's say if you're singing their songs, you just kind of sing it your way, your yeah. style. So are there any specific techniques that you use to kind of make the music your own? Um, and what type, of, what type of techniques do you use to kind of give your own identity to the music? Um, there are uh, um, certain uh, vocal techniques that I use, a lot of warm-up exercises, breathing exercises, you know, falsetto exercises, voice exercises. Uh, and then, I mean, now with YouTube, it's like you can pretty much <laughs> yeah. learn anything uh, whenever you like. And one thing that I like to do when I'm uh, learning keyboard and bass uh, chops, if you will, is listen to people who are you know, like a thousand times better than me. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't mean to be like. No, 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 no. I, no, we got to do it. Time, time is, you know, is the essence. I'm glad we got this job. Tell me how you met. These two brothers and how you guys formed? Well, uh, back in uh, high school, we uh, actually reunited. Uh, we, we had this other band, you know, when we were like, what, 11, 12 years old. With, um, and then we sort of lost contact. And then we reunited in high school and, and basically formed this, this lineup. Had a music teacher, Elliot Osborne, who you know, gave us a lot of guidance. And you know we've done some traveling to Russia, Dominican Republic, uh, Cuba, and years later we're still here. So um, all the way back in high school. Yeah, but the band had a different name back then. What was it? It was called No Vision Required. Okay. And then um, in 1997 is when we formed uh, Los Ciegos del Barrio. And where did the name come from? The No Vision Required. No. no the Los Ciegos del Barrio was actually kind of like a. You know, everybody was just kind of, you know, drinking and, and BSing and stuff, and somebody just kind of said it as a joke. Oh, you know, we're like, we're like Los Cigos and Barrio, like you know, <laughs> blind guys from the hood, and then, and then it, it just kind of stuck. You know, it's like, oh, all right, that's what we're going to call the band. Congas on there, on this, right? Yeah, yeah, I can't play congas. No, 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 I'm doing congas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, that's why I'm, I'm on kit. I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only play drums with no, sticks. No, no, it's all good. Can you take it from, <laughs> from the, I'm right, just, from the, I know my play bass part. I got you out, I got it. <laughs> well, okay, so, I guess, yeah, Rosa gets the, the main harmony, which is... You do know that on the fourth time it stops. So it's oh, yeah. three times get down boogie oogie oogie bet get down boogie oogie oogie bet get down boogie oogie oogie then it's get down. Oh, yeah. okay. okay you know, so we we've always been a multi-genre band uh, since the since the beginning. So even when when you do individual sets, mm -hmm. do you stick to one genre, or you even then you transition? Uh, we, we we tend to jump around. It, it depends on the gig. Uh, most of the, the majority of the gigs that we do are, are Latin, so we'll we'll jump around the different subgenres within the within the uh, Afro-Cuban stuff or, or Dominican or Central American. So we you know we'll, we'll tend to jump around. You know, if, if they want to hire us for you know, rock stuff, you know, we can do that as well. If they want if they want both, then it'll be like. Uh, one of these big setups that we have. We got the whole drop kit, two keyboard stations. So, so do you use your lyrics to get a political socialization? Or um, do you sometimes even tell a story about yourself when you talk about um, I'm, I guess in the band, I don't really write much lyrics. Um, that would be one of the other guys. But even like, the band as a whole? The band as a whole, yeah. I mean, lately we, 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 uh, we've been getting on to the, the political side of things just because things need to be said and we want to send the message across.